So I actually already recorded a different video for today, but after importing it and realizing how long that's going to take to edit, and since I'm on a bit of a time crunch today, I have other plans for today's video. That one's going to be posted tomorrow. But today brings us to more pressing matter that is cleaning out this bookshelf. Well, for the purposes of this video, what it's going to be is showing you what books are actually in my bookshelf, not watching me clean it. So let's take a look at what I got. So let's start pulling stuff out. Alright, well after pulling them all off the shelf, uh, can you see that? There's my little stack of books. Instead of just going through them, instead of just going through them one by one, I think what I'm going to do is try to sort them out best as possible. Uh, in terms of like, what, obviously it's going to be a lot of physics books. But in terms of what branches of physics or math, and then just the bunch of random ones here or there. So let's, I'm gonna I'm gonna sort these out real quick, and then we're gonna break them into sections. I'm gonna show you what I got. Okay. All right. Now that I got them more or less sorted, let's talk about them. This section here is a bunch of random books that I really haven't even read. So I'm going to not. We're not gonna talk about this one. We're not gonna talk about these books. Now the first two books that I have in a pile that are most unrelated to any of the others are my two books on organic chemistry. Now one of these books is just the textbook written by Wade, and then the other one is actually like a little a little handbook that's I remember being pretty useful here. But that's the one I'm gonna spend the least amount of time on because well I'm not a chemist. Let's go ahead and get another one out of the way that are my pop science books. All of these little pop science books I got before or maybe within like my first year as a physics major, uh, which include the 4% Universe by Richard Pinnock. We have a destroyed copy of the Quantum Universe by probably something Forshaw. Okay. Now, what is a pop science book collection without something written by Michio Kaku? Which we have as Parallel Worlds. Last, speaking of uh, Michio Kaku, we, I also have a copy of String Theory for Dummies, which I was when I bought the book. Pop science books are great, they're a good primer for getting you interested in physics, but you know, at a certain point you have to cut off the training wheels and really never really read them again, to be honest. So the next section of books that I have is going to be the math book section. The first one should come as no surprise, it's just a textbook on calculus, the Thomas... Tom, Thomas's book on calculus. Uh, this one is this one's particularly good because it actually just goes through every branch of calc, whether it's one, two, whether it's uh, differential, integral, multivariable, vector, and differential equations. So, yeah, that's a pretty good book. Let's see what else we got. One thing that I'm a huge advocate for when it comes to textbooks is uh, Shalm's outlines. Anything Shalm's outlines, I love. So I've got another set of books for calculus where it's Shalm's. We've got Shalm's differential equations, and we've got Shalm's partial differential equations. Next one brings us to Richard Haberman's book, textbook for uh, partial differential equations. This was a fantastic book. I almost didn't need the Shalm's outlines because this is pretty well written. And it has a good amount of examples. Stepping it up a notch in the math department, I have David Lovelock and Hanno Runs, uh, Tensors, Differential Forms, and Variational Principles. This book is kind of difficult to read. It's written at a level that uh, you'll see if you ever get this book. It's, it's, I have a much better alternative to this book, which is Tensor Calculus for Physics by no no Dwight E. Neuenschwander. This book is amazing, and it really walks you through Tensor Calculus in a way that just makes it so much more approachable. So I highly recommend this book. Out of all of the books here, if you're interested in getting into upper level math, Tensor Calc, Neuenschwander, Okay, and last but not least, we have all of my physics books. Now, I already have a video on what physics textbooks are worth investing in, so if you want to check that video out, be my guest. But let's go into all of them that are actually in my collection. The first one is one that every physics major should have in their bookshelf, which is Mathematical Methods for Physics and Engineering. Um, I don't think I've ever met someone who didn't like this book because it has everything in it. Now this isn't going to be a book review, so I don't want it to actually sound like that. I'm really just trying to speak about what these books are about, and 
I guess kind of review them a little bit, let's be honest. The next book that I also have is a first course in mathematical physics, which is written by Colm Whelan, which is actually my senior thesis advisor. That book does not have nearly as much as mathematical methods for physics and engineers, but it's still pretty good and it's pretty niche. It goes into electrodynamics, quantum, and the math associated for those ones, as well as a little bit of atomic theory. Now, though I am interested in theoretical physics, I still have to take a course or two in experimental, in which case this book, uh, the second edition, Electronics Companion, was one that I was recommended to get. It was okay. I really I cracked it open only a few times. I'm sure it's pretty useful, but um, I never used it outside of my electronics class. Now, not to delve back into the pop science realm, but I also have Leonard Susskind's book on quantum mechanics, which isn't as hand-wavy as you might think, considering he's one of the more famous physicists, and generally they try to uh, n make you not look at the math, but this does give a gentle introduction into some of the math associated with quantum, as well as some of the underlying principles of quantum mechanics. I would never use this as a textbook, but it's pretty good for supplementing a textbook. Speaking of quantum mechanics textbooks, I have three. I have my personal favorite, which is Griffith's Quantum Mechanics, and then I also have two written by the same author, which are Quantum Physics by, and I always mess up his name, uh, Gasorowitz. This one I wasn't particularly impressed with, it's the third edition, but it seems like he kind of hit things right with his earlier editions. This is, it's pro let's be honest, this is probably the first because it's really old looking. And this actually isn't my book, my uh, senior thesis advisor lent me this book because it contains some information that was relevant to my project. So when in doubt for undergrad physics, I, I mean, again, I can't advocate higher for Griffiths. Um, I mean, if you're a grad student, you're not going to be using Griffiths. You'll be using something along the lines of Sakurai or Shankar, but I'm not a grad student yet. And then the last two get their own section, which is my two books on relativity. I have one that is on special and general relativity, which I got at the bookstore down the road for like $3. Apparently the general public isn't interested in relativity. And then the last one is Paul Dirac's book on general relativity. And this book is like 40 pages. 67 pages. This is like a little handbook, essentially. It's a, it's a really good book if you already know general relativity, which I didn't uh, when I first got the book. So I was in for a shock when I first started trying to read this book. I just wasn't up for it. And frankly, I'm still not at the level to read this book. The the books, the books Some of the math books that I showed earlier, the Tensor Calculus for Physics, that's an excellent sort of introduction to the math associated with general relativity, which is, you know, Tensor Calculus and Differential Geometry. I just remembered that there is one more book that I have, but I don't have on me because I have it in the Society of Physics Students Lounge at my university. And that is my uh, Thermal and Statistical Physics books by Seal Salinger. Um, I don't have it on me because I'm not in StatMech and a lot of people are taking it right now, so they had a better use for it than I did. So if there are any books that you're like, how do you not have Richard Feynman's Surely You're Joking, Mr. Feynman, or something along those lines, let me know in the comments section what books I should own, and I'll see you guys there.